Welcome to part 29 of building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to pick up where we left off, specifically building out the episode info cell. Before we get into things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, say hello in the comments for the YouTube algorithm, and let's continue. So we had briefly discussed how this layout's going to work here. We've got characters showing up, which looks awesome. We're going to do two things. We're going to build out the cell, and we're also going to hook up tapping on a character and opening up further character details. So let's get to it. We're actually already in the appropriate file here. It's the RM episode info collection view cell. We have two pieces of information, a title and value. Respectively, we are going to want just two labels and we're just going to configure that with said uh, data that's going to come in. So we're going to have a title label. Let me actually call it. Yeah, I guess title label is a good word or a good name, I should say for it. We're going to go ahead and create it with the anonymous closure pattern. We'll go ahead and return it here and we want to set up some constraints on it. So we're going to assign this to false. I'll also set up the font on it. So we'll go ahead and say it is a system font of size 20 and a width of medium. Let me go ahead and copy and paste this. And then here we'll go ahead and change this to be value label. I'm going to also change the size of this. Maybe we'll make this regular. And I'm also going to right align the value label text and you guys will see momentarily why that is. And the property I think is called text alignment. We're looking for right. So cool. Let's also make this uh, multiple lines. So we'll say a number of lines is zero, which means that the uh, text will line wrap uh, accordingly. So now that we've got both of these uh, labels here, we can go ahead and say uh, content view add sub views plural which is the extension we added and we're going to say title label value label and we want to add some constraints so let's go ahead and say add constraints and did we create this function already it looks like we have not so let's go ahead and create it right here it's going to be a private function and just like all of our other views so far we're going to say ns layout constraints dot activate and we're going to pass in a collection of constraints let me just set up these two other functions here. So whenever we want to pre uh, prepare this uh, cell for reuse, we're going to say title labels text. Let's go ahead and nil that out, aka reset it for the value label as well. And the last thing, when we configure it with the view model, we are just going to set it to the text that we're getting from said view model. So as a refresher, I'll click into this. We've got simply two properties in here, constant strings. So let me set up these uh, constraints. So essentially what I want is I want the title label to be the left 50% of the cell and the value label to be the right 50%. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say title label. It's top anchor is going to be equal to the constant views top anchor. And maybe we'll add a constant here of uh, maybe like four to have a little bit of space. And let me go ahead and just copy and paste this here. So we'll say that the left anchor, and we are also going to do bottom anchor, are going to be left anchor, bottom anchor. We want to make this negative four. And let me just copy and paste this. And we're going to fix the alignment by highlighting and doing control I. And we'll just change this label here to be now the value label. Top anchor will be the same thing, bottom anchor will be the same thing, but in this case, we want this to be the right anchor, and this will be from the right anchor, negative four, so basically move the margin inwards by four, and we wanna give both the title and value a 50% width of its container. So we're gonna say the width anchor is going to be a constraint equal to content view width anchor, and we'll do multiply by 0 0.5 and we'll copy and paste it and just change it as well here for the value label. And since we did add the four point margin on the left and right, let's actually say time 0 0.47. This way it'll be basically 47% and account for the, uh, the margin. So to make sure it looks appropriate and it's being laid out appropriately, as you have probably seen me do already, I like adding background colors to stuff just because it's easier to visualize it and make sure what we're doing actually makes sense. So cool, let's go ahead and build and run. We'll click into this and just like that, we have our labels showing up and it actually looks pretty cool. So 
One thing that I'll call out is perhaps we don't want the height of the cell to be so much. So we can go ahead and decrease it. So let's go into where we created the layout here for the uh, info section. And we can change the 100 here to maybe be like 80 for the uh, group height. So let's go ahead and see if that looks a little better. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We can see two lines, one line. If there's gonna be a third line, it'll just get truncated, but I think that is okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of the colors here. And one other thing that I noticed, which looks a little strange, is we are showing the created uh, date here as a date string. We probably wanna format it. So if I'm not mistaken, we already have a date formatter somewhere. So let me see what I did with that thing. All right, date formatter exists in the character info collection view cell. And let's see how we actually use this. We'll just end up reusing it. I think what I did is I created the date from the string and then from that I went ahead and formatted it. So let's actually come back here and let's find where we're creating the, uh, rather passing in the text for the view model for each of those info cells. I want to say it's in the view model folder. Under episode detail, we're going to be creating this cell. So let's see where this is created. I think it's in here. All right, cool, it is in fact in here. And for created, what I'm gonna do is we are going to say created string, and I'm gonna compute that created string here. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So we're gonna say that the created string will be empty to start off with. The first thing we want to do is create a date. So we'll say created date will be off of this. We want to get the date formatter and we're going to say go ahead and create a date from episode.created, that's string. And this is going to actually give us an, an optional back. So we are going to want to unwrap it. And once we've unwrapped it, we can go and do the following. We're going to say that the created string will now actually equal once again this and then the static formatter off of it since we don't need to recreate it and we're going to say create a string from a date that we give you i'll actually just call this date to shorthand it a little bit and this also will give me a nullable back so i will just go go ahead and coalesce it to uh maybe we'll coalesce it to episodes.created and also start this off as episode.created as well Go ahead and give this a build and run. It looks like it's yelling at me that it isn't actually optional. So in this case, we can get rid of that and hit run and let's see what it looks like. Okay, cool. So we actually have a formatted date now. We also have a more appropriate size here. Perhaps we wanna add a little bit of margin on the left and right because it's slightly close and kind of looks a little off. So I will actually do that. So let's open up this uh, episode details. We'll come into this cell. And maybe instead of four on the left here, the top I'll just ignore. Uh, maybe we'll go and do 10 here. And just for the right one here, do negative 10. So it doesn't look super duper close. Build and run. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that definitely looks better. So cool, the screen is actually starting to look pretty nice. The last thing I wanna do is we already have a character detail screen. It would be cool if we're able to tap on one of these characters instead of having to come back to this tab and tap uh, a character to see their information. So we can handle this pretty easily. Now, what we wanna do is leverage a delegate to get the selection out of our view. So I'm gonna jump into the character episode detail view. This is where we already have our collection view uh, delegate implemented somewhere in here. So we do have this did select item at index path. We need a delegate for our cell here. So I'm gonna create a interface for that, which is going to be a protocol. It's going to have any object so we can actually handle this being a weak reference. We'll say public weak var, the delegate will be of this type. And I'll add a single function in here. And that's going to be uh, basically start off with the name of this view. So we'll have rm episode details uh, view. We'll say detail view, just common naming convention. You always pass in a reference um, of the view that is you know triggering the call. Did select character 
and here this will be an rm character like so and now here when we do the did select in the collection view in this function here we can actually see what selection we have so the way we do that the way we get the actual selection is we need to switch just like we did here so let's actually do the following let's grab this entire switch and i'm just going to copy and paste it into here if we end up here we if we don't have a view model we'll basically fatal error out uh, in the information case we don't want to be able to select anything so i'm just going to put a break here and ignore this and in the case of a character when it's selected we do want to get the character model out so let's see if we actually even have a character model inside of here something tells me that we do not so let's actually find out if in fact we do so let's see where i held that view model i believe we held it somewhere on here let's go ahead and see i'm going to jump to here the cell view models okay cool we've got sections in here and then we have a rm character collection view cell view model okay so it looks like we don't actually hold the character on here okay so that's a problem so what i want to go ahead and do is get a particular character at a position so let's see how i can go about doing that so instead of using the view models here i already know the index path so I can check on the uh, detail of views view model that we actually have a character at that position. So I know that sounds a little confusing right now, so bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and say that the view model is the view model. We're going to first and foremost unwrap this. Then we know we can get the sections, so we can go ahead and delete this. And let me delete this else here. No longer need this. Fix that typo there. Okay, so we have this view model thing now. This is the view model for the entire detail screen. And this view model, we have cell view models. Okay, that looks perfect. Now, what I want to do is I want to get the character. So the way I want to get the character here is by saying character equals this view model character at, and I want to pass in basically a position. And we haven't created this function yet. We will momentarily. And once we have gone and done that, we can actually pass it back to our delegate by saying delegate. And then here we're gonna say this view did select this character. So the next thing we wanna do is create a function that can actually resolve a character for us. And this is going to be in the RM episode detail view view model. So if I could find it, detail view view model because we already hold the characters in here on the data tuple. So now what we can actually do is create a single function and this function will be character at, and I'll go ahead and do character at index. And, and all we're going to return is, we're gonna say guard let, um, guard let data tuple will be data tuple since it is in fact uh, nullable. If we don't have the tuple for some reason, we are going to return optional, and this function here returns a uh, optional character. But if we do have a data tuple, all we're going to return is data tuple.characters at the index that we've passed in. So let me jump back to the episode detail view, and I realize this video might have gotten a little confusing, but bear with me here. This character is now going to be optional because that function returns optional, so we will unwrap it. And if you try to build, everything should be compiling now. But when we actually build and click on one of these characters in the episode detail screen, nothing's going to happen. And the reason nothing's going to happen is we haven't actually assigned a delegate to this particular property. We can do that in one of the controllers, particularly the episode detail view controller. So I'll come into here, and what we'll do is we'll say that the detail view, if I can actually find where the heck it is, the detail view, its delegate, will basically be self. So this view controller will conform to the appropriate delegates, and I'll actually just stick it right up here, maybe make my life easier. We'll do this delegates, and accordingly, we want to implement the function that we have added in here. So I'll just copy it and jump back to this controller. 
and let's actually make this appropriately uh, commented. So this is the view model delegate, and this is the view delegate. And once we've actually selected a character, the last last thing to do is actually just create a RM character detail view controller. So the way that I intentionally set this up is we can create this now and just pass in that character. We're heavily reusing our view controllers, but it makes our entire app pretty interactive, which is pretty awesome. And I want to showcase this before we wrap up this video. So we're just going to push the view controller, meaning animate it onto the stack. And I have the character, so I think I can set the title here and I can actually do character.name. And I want to make sure that the large title display mode is never, so it looks, you know, kind of uh, consistent. So let's jump to episodes. Let's say we care about, let's scroll down, let's find a different episode. So let's say we care about this one here, episode um, eight in season three, Morty's Mind Blowers. We'll go ahead and click that. And let's say we're particularly interested in Jessica here. So I can click on Jessica and we get all the information about Jessica. But what's really cool about this is we now see all the episodes that Jessica is involved in. So we can actually continue cyclically in this kind of navigation pattern. So I can see that Jessica is also in the ABCs of Bath. So let me go ahead and click into that one, or Beth, I should say. And uh, once again, we have more characters. So in this case, let's say now I want to know about, let's pick a different character, maybe Joseph here, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can obviously click the tab at the bottom here. Well, maybe it's not obvious, but if you are in a navigation stack, you are able to click the tab at the bottom here, and it'll pop you out all the way to the first most controller in the tab where you started. So that's basically all I had for this video. We built out the remainder of the screen and we also hooked up tapping a character to show the previously built out character detail screen, which is pretty cool if I don't say so myself. Uh, we've built out a lot of functionality. We still got locations left to go. We still got searching left to do and then we haven't even touched settings. And I also just realized that we don't have a launch screen or even an app icon. So I do want to add those things because they are slightly important. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I realized this video was a little confusing. So rewatch it if need be. Let me know in the comments if anything I you know glossed over. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Drop a like before clicking away. Subscribe. Tweet out the series. Connect on LinkedIn. I will see you in the next part.